this is one of the first flies you'll see coming off uh, in the rivers here in the UK and it's actually one of the first flies I ever tied uh, in the exact same style the only difference I use is the cock de leon in the tail I used to use a, like a mallard or anything uh, or a mix of mallard and some hackle fibre now it's it's one of these flies that the fish either like it or they don't. They seem to it's times they seem to ignore it and go for the say the the duns in between uh these bigger flies. But there is times where the, the fish do like to have a go at them. Now the size this is a size twelve Sababless hook, dry fly hook. Thread. Now I would use if you look at this one here, I mean orange thread and I would use the the in this case the Cahill or yellow thread for the other one. So it's good to have a mix. I, I like to. It's, it's how I originally tied the fly, uh, basically near enough more than 30 years ago. So now we simply start with thread at the eye, take my thread down around about halfway to along the shank, about there, and then remove the waste piece. Bring your thread back up halfway that distance. That gives you the position for the wing. Now the wing I've used many. I've used quite a few fibres over the years. Uh, one of my favourites is to use uh, this is hen pheasant quill. Now you'll need a right and a left slip, so a couple of good ones here. I've been using them up. A couple of there we are, those two. Nice mark. Now you can use the other side, which I have done. This finer side. Uh, and then just keep them, don't throw them away. Now what I'm going to do is remove slip from either side. See, so you need the right and the left side. Trim it away. I'm just going to peel it away. Just grab it, bring out the ends a wee bit. Tear it off or cut it away. It's up to yourself how you do it. Now you want the natural curve of the fibre to come away from one another. So that means the the good side of the feather is going to be to the inside of the wing so there's a good side and what you're going to see in the outside is this lighter colour and just bring the tips in just make sure they're both the same one, two fibres, too much in one so take them away there we are. now we tie these forward to the eye now what I'm doing here is just basically shortening this Taper, and making sure that they they're lined up. You can see how they naturally curve away from one another. Now, looking at length of the hook tied forward to the eye, do a nice pinching loop. Now, when you pinch the thread, which is forming the loop, you just draw it nice and easy through your fingers until it stops on the hook. Keep it always keep it tight. Come in with another one. And then a couple of more normal turns. At this point, you don't worry too much about how perfect your wing is. I mean, once you start to cast this fly, the, the wing will go all over the place. But the fish will still take it okay. Now I'm going to lock the wing up. So you need it up. So you just pull it up. Put your thread turns. Build them up in front of the wing. And there we go. Bring a thread to the back, and then I'm going to come in, trim, trim away the waste at a tapered cut, which will help taper the body for you. Just check I've got it all. Yep. And then we just run the thread down. Ready for our tail, and you stop your thread just before it goes round the bend. To that point there. As I say, I use a cock de Leon. This is it here. It's a nice fibre, great fibre to use. Lasts well. Now you don't put just three on. Just we can't exaggerate much as we do with the hackle. I like a good around about half a dozen because as you start to take fish, they will start to wear slightly, and it'll make your fly last that wee bit longer. Just bring the fibre straight out. From the stem, they need a line of tips up. You're looking at least the length of the hook.
to be over as for the tail. Now this turn, what I do is I offer the fibres to my side, and when I come round with a turn, and onto the bare hook at this point, see how the thread turn was on the hook. Then, this what this will do is lift the wing on top of the fibres. Now, I bring the thread underneath, and then I pull, pull towards the eye, lock it down with a turn. Now I usually do that as quick as I can, it saves the fibres moving around. Just check and see how they're sitting. You see how it splays the fibres out. And that's what you want. There we go. Trim away the waist, the full length of the body. She's there. Now, originally I used this heat of hair's ear dubbing for the, for the body. But nowadays I just use this. This is the natural fur. It's a natural fur by Wopsy. You've probably seen me using it a few times and it's a fox squirrel. There we are, sorry. The one that's highlighted in the black dot. And then we just slightly dub this on and the way up. Don't be shy, that's a big fly in the water. You can't miss the March Brown. There uh, we go. So big that the the birds actually feed on these the seagulls. Uh, we would say the black headed gills feed on these coming down the river. And that's usually the sign that you see that the hatch is on. As much as the olives, the olives come off the same, you'll see the, the, the birds having a go. And here we are. And if you ever come to Scotland, one of the best places I've seen it is in the River Clyde. And it's just amazing to see. Two hackles I'm going to be using. Now this is just a Chinese partridge, just a cheap one. You get the English partridge as well. Now I want a small brown partridge hackle. And you're only going to get a couple of turns with this. So what I do is, is draw back the fluff. Just a wee bit. There's your, there's your hackle there. And then basically just roll the bottom end of the, the feather. Because this is your grip. This is basically your natural hackle plier if you want to call it. So you can hold on to it. And then I use a, just so I'm, you get really into the fibres here, I grip a hold of the tip of the hackle with the scissors, uh, sorry, with the hackle pliers to pull the tip out. Just off it to the side with the underside facing myself, a couple of turns. Just leave that tip there at the moment. Now you can come in and just level it up a bit. Then get yourself like a, this. This is a ginger hackle. This is to support the soft hackle. This is what's wound in between. This is what makes the fly float. So you can use a darker hackle if you want. This is a nice colour. And I've used furnace. I've used just I've used two or three colours over the years. But the best one is this. Again, catch it at the back with the underside of the feather facing yourself. Bring a thread to the front, catching in both waist end of the partridge and uh, the tip of the stem of the, the hackle. It's going to tidy up a bit better. And there we go. Hackle, wind first. Go wind about three turns at the back. Come in really close to the wing. Looking for at least three turns or so at the front. Come across thread, make sure you've got a, again another good two or three turns in there to secure, trim away the waist. Just take your time. Now you're not going to get many turns out of this, you're just going to have to be, just see how many we'll get, we'll get maybe one, use it all up. Full turn at the back, bring your thread through, oh sorry, your patch shackle through to the front. Bring the stem to the front so you can catch it in with the thread. Now what I'm going to do here, just the way it's sitting, I'm going to catch it with a couple of turns, fold it back. Anything going forward of the eye, I'm just going to draw it back with my fingers. Tidy up this head area. Just the way it's worked out, that's the way I'm going to tie it. 
break that off. Now what I'm going to do here is just put some varnish onto my thread. This will seal the whip finish. You may touch one or two of the fibres, but don't worry, they can clean up. Wind it down towards the eye. And there we are. And that's... Basically, yeah, don't be too fussy with it. I mean, you can be... Uh, really fussy with these flies, but they're, they're rougher the better sometimes. I'm going to use the scissors here to separate the wing. If you do want them to separate, you can put a figure eight through them. But as I say, I, I'm not bothered about it. Just split that there a wee bit, so I'm just going to bring it back in so it looks neat. As I say, don't worry about it. There we go. There you go. We wee rough fly early season. A wee rough, it's a big rough fly for us. All the March Browns, you know. Now we could put a wee drop of varnish just to tidy the head up. All the way around, just have to make sure the, the eye is clean. Just see a wee bit of the stem there, I think. There we are. Right. I don't think it's going to make too much difference to the dressing. A bit of fluff. Ah, just a bit of fluff. There we are. Anyway, that's it. That's your March Brown. Big rough fly. You can trim away some of this fibre here if you want, or just when I gink it up or use my floating, I encourage the fibres to come up the sides so it sits flatter, but uh, once it's had a cast, it'll air out the fly, the dressing a wee bit better. The twisted partridge hack will, will mix better through the your ginger hackle. Enjoyed that.